This podcast is brought to you by Flipper, the number one marketplace to buy and sell online businesses and startups. So if you own or run your own online business, have you considered selling your site, your store, your tech or your app? Well, with world-class combined matching technology, dedicated brokers and end-to-end services, all at the most efficient price, Flipper makes selling your online business simple. So to get a free valuation, simply visit flipper.com slash tech talks. Each month, thousands of online business owners exit with Flipper. Again, to learn more, visit flipper.com slash tech talks. That's F-L-I-P-P-A, flipper.com slash tech talks. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, after reading about Manage Engine, the enterprise IT management division of the Zoho Corporation, and how they've conducted a global survey around empowerment and democratization of IT with 3,300 decision makers across IT and business decision makers, I felt compelled to find out more. As an ex-IT guy, this is the stuff that excites me. So today, I've invited Arun Kumar, Regional Director at Manage Engine, to join me on the podcast and share some insights around IT leadership, autonomy, and the expectations, and the relationship between IT, the C-suite, and levels of consultation. And also, I want to explore IT sovereignty and decentralization, and why companies are choosing to decentralize their IT, and what their motivation for doing so is. And then, of course, we can't have an IT podcast without mentioning IT security and cyber attack insights. So these are just a few of the things that I want to talk about today. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to the UK, where you can join me and Aaron Kumar in conversation today. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? So very uh, good morning, Neil. Uh, So my name is Arun Kumar. Uh, I am the regional uh, director for Manage Engine, uh, a division of Zoho Corporation. So I currently take care of uh, UK, Europe, and Asia markets in terms of uh, business development and uh, handling channel partners. So I've been with uh, Zoho Corporation since 2004, uh, and I work for the division Manage Engine, which offers uh, products for IT infrastructure management for enterprises to manage their uh, complete IT uh, in terms of managing their network, applications, uh, end user devices, uh, taking care of security, and also in terms of uh, analytics and taking care of the identity access management and privilege password management for organizations. So we built Manage Engine in terms of offering uh, enterprise IT IT to manage their uh, entire infrastructure holistically. So we uh, serve across 200,000 customers globally today. Uh, That's one division of Zoho Corporation. And the other division is Zoho.com, which offers close to uh, 50 plus applications uh, for any business to run their end-to-end operations. Well, it's a huge pleasure to have you on the podcast today. And one of the reasons that I invited you on was to explore the world of IT sovereignty and decentralization, especially in UK companies versus the the global average. So can I ask you to set the scene uh, today and tell me a little bit more about this recent global survey that you've done and who you spoke with? Perfect. Yes. So uh, if you look at Manage Engine, uh, predominantly the products we built today uh, is for IT decision makers to manage their IT. So been in the business for uh, almost 20 years. So we have seen uh, how IT has evolved uh, in the last uh, few years, particularly because so all of us in the past know, right? So IT was more confined to uh, managing the IT infrastructure in terms of uh, taking care of the devices, network availability, more of support assisting the other departments. Uh, But that trend has really changed a lot, uh, particularly after the digital transformation, uh, where each department has their own autonomy uh, in terms of uh, 
uh, either up following the technology process or practices or uh, using their own applications or buying their own devices. So the role of IT has completely changed. So we wanted to find out what the future of IT at work would be. So we conducted a survey uh, using uh, Van Sernbone, uh, serving across more than 3,000 plus enterprise organizations across the world, including UK and Ireland, to particularly see how uh, the decentralization of IT has happened, uh, what are the reasons they wanted to go with the decentralization, and what kind of challenges and what kind of collaboration which IT has to do with other departments and what the role of IT would be in the future. So that was the reason why we conducted the survey to see how the future of IT would be. And when we're talking about the future of IT, I'm curious, why are companies choosing to decentralize their IT? What, what's driving this change, do you think? Perfect. So uh, if you look at, uh, in our survey, uh, we found out more than 55% uh, of the respondents have said the decentralization drive has been spurred uh, by the desire for innovation. So that is at the top in terms of the survey results, where the primary force behind uh, moving to decentralization is because of the innovation. Uh, but if you particularly see what's driving this change, uh, while digital transformation is something everybody spoke about for the last 10 years, uh, if you look at in the last couple of years, particularly in the pandemic, uh, organizations has really changed the way we operate because one, you have to ensure uh, the business continuity happens. You also have to take care because your employees are uh, located in different locations. You have to ensure they are connected. They are able to serve the customers. So it's very important that the data is available and accessible everywhere. So it's about having a better employee and customer experience and you have to ensure you innovate the way you do the business to ensure you stay ahead of the competition. So one primary reason why we see organizations really moving towards the decentralization is innovation. And I think traditionally, in some circles, IT had a bit of a reputation for being blockers, whereas now I think we're all moving to a place where in a world, a digital world, where everyone needs technology and new solutions to stay ahead of the game, I would hope that we're heading to a place where IT is seen as business enablers and a key business partner there. But how are you seeing the influence and importance of the IT department and how they're collaborating with other internal teams outside of IT? How are you seeing that, that relationship evolving? Yes, perfect. So uh, I think the collaboration is very key here. Uh, and one of the major feedback we got from the survey results is 82% uh, of the respondents have said the collaboration has really improved in the last couple of years, particularly after the pandemic. Uh, in terms of the influence, uh, I, I think uh, if you look at uh, the role of IT has actually changed from uh, being support towards to the innovation to being part of the innovation, right? You being an influencer is what the change which we are looking at. Uh, it again depends upon the organization, uh, whether the IT has to support innovation or IT has to influence or be part of the decision making on the innovation, right? That depends upon the organization. But what we have seen is more than 80% of the respondents have said that IT has to be part of the influence or the decision making when it comes to any change or any innovations which an organization follows. Because if you look at the digital transformation journey, it's very important that you put IT at the center because you have to make sure you cover up in terms of the complete uh, security practices, uh, regulations to be followed, and also make sure there is a support structure available uh, when it comes to any change you make in terms of the digital transformation journey. So the change what we see is uh, IT moving out from being Assisting the innovation to being at the center in terms of part of the decision making is what the influence we look at in terms of how IT has evolved in this digital transformation journey. 
And uh, if we go back, what, two, three years, almost overnight, every business unit turned to their IT department and said, we need to work from home at scale by Monday. <laughs> and then from there, of course, we've evolved into hybrid working and those same business units are now saying to IT, we need to work from any device, any location, anywhere, any network, at any time. So I'm curious, has the pandemic or how have you seen the pandemic impact IT? And do you think they've come out stronger as a result? Yep, you're absolutely right, right? So uh, the pandemic uh, took everybody totally off guard. Um, absolutely right. So Monday, you, you have to bring back to your business. Suddenly, everybody located at different locations. Uh, the data has to be accessed. You have to support your customers. I think one of the key uh, insights from the survey results also showed that more than 87% uh, said IT department's success is directly correlated to organization's overall success. I think IT has really pulled off well in terms of making sure uh, the businesses are run uh, in the pandemic, even though the stress was really high because the priorities changed. But I would say IT has really come back stronger. Uh, again, the survey reports goes back to more than 79% say IT could drive greater innovation uh, if it had a strong leadership role in terms of decision making. And 89% of them said IT is more res responsible for business innovation even before than what it was in pandemic. So I think IT has really come back stronger in terms of their roles and responsibilities in the way the business operates today. And of course, the other big change is the continuously evolving threat landscape. And now we've opened up the uh, the corporate networks and people can work from anywhere, any device. It can increase the risk of security attacks, security breaches and hacks, et cetera. So can you tell me more about the perceived role of IT in helping to prevent some of those security attacks? Yep, absolutely. This is, in fact, a very interesting topic. Uh, in, in fact, on our survey reports, it said uh, more than 70% uh, feel IT is solely responsible for any security attacks. Uh, and only 23% agreed that everybody in the organization is responsible to prevent these attacks. So this actually needs to change because the way uh, people perceive today in terms of security attacks and cyber threats, it's completely the ownership lies with IT. Uh, but I think uh, it has to change. Uh, everybody in the organization should be responsible uh, in terms of uh, taking the ownership in terms of security. So today the perception is IT is completely responsible and that has to change. Every employee in the organization is responsible for taking care of the cyber threats. And I'm curious, we're both located in the UK here. and We'll have people listening all over the world. How is the UK comparing with the global market, especially when it comes to educating its workforce about security threats? Because traditionally, we've all been in office environments where you have that annual uh, compliance security test where you, you tick a few boxes and then you've, you've, you're now compliant. But it's like we need more than that now, right? Yep, absolutely. In fact, uh, particularly the response from survey. Uh, when it comes to educating the workforce about security threats, uh, more than 52%, 52% from UK have said that uh, you need to have more training, uh, particularly on the uh, security aspects. And almost 74% of the respondents have also said the existing security landscape for their organization needs to change to ensure the organization is protected from cyber attacks. So it's it's very important. Uh, uh, education and training is more required when it comes to the security landscape, landscape uh, on how the organizations can be better prepared uh, to ensure they're uh, prepared in terms of cyber attacks. And of course, you're right in the heart of this industry. You've probably seen and heard it all many, many times before. Did anything in this uh, survey surprise you at all? Did anything take you by surprise? On the global survey, we saw almost 90% uh, are already in the path of digital transformation for their businesses. However, on UK, it was almost one third who haven't really started the decentralization. Even though the other uh, survey report says almost 79% of non-IT employees in their organization are more knowledgeable in IT than before. 
so while this says uh, they are well aware in terms of the it aspects still there is some reluctancy in terms of moving towards the digital transformation journey so uh, this is quite surprising given the fact that almost 79% of respondents from non it on uk have said that they are more knowledgeable in terms of the it practices today while uh, the awareness is very much there uh, for some reason i think uh, they have not initiated the decentralization strategy at in uk uh, and of course uh, if you look at decentralization even more important if you wanted to be innovative if you wanted to stay ahead of the competition so this survey part is quite surprising for us because uh, on one side we see almost 80% saying they are more knowledgeable in terms of it but they haven't actually started the digital transformation journey yet and i think if any of us pick up a newspaper switch on the tv or doom scroll our way down a, a timeline <laughs> we're all surrounded by so much bad news and uncertainty at the moment so to end on a a positive note if we look to the future what is it that excites you about it in 2023 and beyond and, and what's your big focus going to be next year so while definitely there is uncertainty around the world today so what we see is i think most of the companies would continue to go on the digital transformation journey in the coming years uh, of course that's going to come with quite a lot of challenges in terms of uh, uh, better training uh, better security protocols uh, what we see is i think the hybrid model will continue to work people will tend to adopt to the cloud technologies and you will have the mobile first coming in i think we will continue to invest in uh, building products which supports the it in terms of having a holistic approach and spread beyond other departments in terms of uh, influencing on how uh, business decisions can be done how they can be better prepared to stay ahead of the competition i think the focus area would be to build more in terms of the remote model bring more cloud technology into practice and of course followed by uh, implementing automations uh, by bringing in ai and ml techniques so this actually helps it teams to go out of it uh, and start supporting the other departments well thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and talking about this survey in more detail sharing your insights and as we now come to the end of the podcast i'm gonna have a bit of fun with you now because you've had such a varied career in in technology and as i said a few moments ago you've probably seen and heard it all many times before but what can you share a funny or most interesting story that has happened in your career because i'm sure you've got a few stories that uh, you've picked up along the way oh absolutely yes so in in, in fact uh, when i joined uh, the name of the company at the time was adventnet so uh, managing and of course was a division of it but we were used to call as adventnet as a company uh, but, but back then in 2008 uh, 2009 uh we came up with the other division which is the zoho so which in fact actually as was on the theme of small office and home office but we named the division as zoho uh, so suddenly the management made a decision to uh, change of the change the name of the company to zoho corporation uh because we felt that's more relevant uh in line with how as a company we wanted to transition ourselves to cloud technology uh so i was on a business trip right after that name change of the company uh, so to new zealand and in the immigration when i was questioned so which company you represent i said i worked for a company called as zoho so the immigration officer immediately picked up the name and said oh wow what a great company is it is uh, i used to watch a lot about you and my son really enjoys the program he said what programs your son look at and then i found out he was talking about a uh, a tv channel called as pogo and not zoho <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite interesting and funny at that time because uh, we just had the name change but yeah. if you look back uh, 10 years from now uh, i think zoho is known to most of the companies and not across the world so that was quite an interesting journey what it was to 10 years before and 10 years now what a great story absolutely love that so funny and before i let you go though we we've, we've talked about the report today so if anyone listening wants to find out more about that report dig deeper into the insights find you online or contact your team what what's the best starting point for everything i, I think yeah, i think the survey uh, gives a, a great report in terms of uh, 
uh, what kind of ch challenges and what's that organization has to do uh, in terms of when you wanted to go on the digital transformation journey. I think uh, I would say the key highlights would be to involve IT on the decision-making stage itself and uh, ensure the focus stays in terms of security aspects, even though there's quite a lot of autonomy comes in uh, to other departments in terms of decision-making and obviously followed by training uh, to all the employees so that you have a very successful journey on the digital transformation part. And that really helps your company to stay ahead in terms of competition and do better with business. Fantastic. And is there a, a particular website URL or anything you'd point people to? Oh, yeah, I think uh, we have the survey uh, reports and some of our findings on our website itself at manageengine.co.uk. So uh, customers can very well refer to the website in terms of finding the survey reports or can reach us directly and we'd be happy to share more than that. Excellent. Well, I will add a, a link directly to that on the show notes just so people can find things nice and easy. But love chatting with you today. I think we covered a lot there, didn't we, in a short amount of time from the influence and importance of the IT department, how they collaborate with other internal teams and the impact of the pandemic uh, on IT. So many big changes over the last few years, and I suspect there will be many more changes next year. So it'd be great to stay in touch and see how this journey continuously evolves. But just a big thank you for sharing the insights from the survey with me today, Aaron. Well, thank you very much, Neil. Uh, it's a pleasure connecting with you and I look forward to catching up with you again and, and, and hope to share more information on how IT gets transformed in the coming years. Thank you very much as well. As I said at the very beginning, Manage Engine is a division of the Zoho Corp and, and they have multiple divisions and the Manage Engine division offers a broad portfolio of IT management software, including things like network management, application management, help desk, customer support, etc., so for me, it was it, so for me, it was great just to get their insights on things like IT leadership, autonomy, expectations, sovereignty, decentralization, cyber attack insights, all the big talking points in the industry at the moment. And obviously, you've heard Aaron and you've heard me discussing it with him today. But I'm quite conscious we've got businesses and business leaders listening all over the world, and you're going to have different insights. So I want to get those on the podcast too. So first of all, I would say check out uh, the blog post associated to this podcast over my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. Go to podcast. You'll see a blog post for every one of the 2,200 interviews that we've completed. But in the blog post for this episode, I'll include the link to the report so you can dig a little bit deeper on there. Have a look at that report and then also let me know what you've seen in your industry or your region. I'd love to hear more on that. And as always, easiest guy in the world to get hold of, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. Keep sending in those questions, pictures, thoughts about areas we've discussed on the podcast and anything in between. But that's it for today. T tomorrow, we're going to talk about a completely different topic, a different industry, but essentially about how technology is transforming it. So a big thank you for listening as always, and until next time, don't be a stranger. 